Good morning. Welcome to worship at Good Shepherd Lutheran. This beautiful Sunday morning, we're getting a little bit of rain and cold weather, and pretty soon I'm going to be driving over here on slippery roads, right? <laughs> Couldn't help but think that this morning. Special welcome to uh, uh, Greg and Chelsea and the, the Jackson. Hi. You should see his eyes wide open. I'm predicting by the time we get to the baptism, He's going to be out of sorts. <laughs> it just doesn't last that long, unless, unless I put him to sleep during the sermon. That could happen. Uh, but welcome, everyone, uh, uh, as uh, we come, come together to worship. A couple of announcements before we begin. Uh, I just had a nice conversation during a coffee conversation uh, at the 8 o'clock. And there's another one scheduled at 10.15. A number of you have signed up for that. And I would think there's... Andy, is there room in that? If, if, if you haven't signed up, this would be the last coffee conversation uh, scheduled. So it's just been sort of a, a way to, for me to, to meet you and uh, to, to begin a conversation about uh, ministry here at Good Shepherd. On tomorrow night, is Monday night, uh, at 7 o'clock, Everyone is invited, in particular we've invited uh, uh, council members and those who are on, on, uh, on teams to come, uh, but it's a, it's a time for me to, to make some more, more of a presentation and, and to talk about this time of interim. Also for you to, to, to give me some input on what, what's been going on here at, at Good Shepherd and some of the issues you want to make sure we look at during the time of interim. But that's. That's tomorrow night at 7, and you're, you're welcome uh, to come. Anyone will be meeting down in the fellowship hall. I uh, invite you to come back Thursday noon. Who has something good to say about the, uh, the hot dish luncheon? Who knows what that is? I've never been to one. Okay, come on now, don't be shy. Who's in charge? Nobody's in charge. <laughs> This is dangerous. <laughs> Has anybody been to one before? Hot dish luncheon. Raise your hand. Is this brand new? Oh, you've had a salad lunch and now it's a hot dish luncheon. So that's what's new. Change. I think I'm going to eat there. So uh, you're all invited 11 to 12.30 here at Good Shepherd Lutheran. And uh, during the service, during the children's sermon where uh, Lorene is going to uh, uh, bring a special, special message about the backpack ministry, so we're looking forward to that. And then next Sunday, who knows what next Sunday is? What? Confirmation Sunday. So I'm looking forward. I've uh, uh, had a chance to meet all the confirmants. And uh, we don't know each other very well, but we will uh, we'll have our confirmation service next Sunday, also Reformation Sunday. So please come back and, and bring your extended families uh, for that special day. Any other announcements that I might be missing? Uh, there are a number of them in, in, your, uh, in your bulletin. Anything I'm you want to lift up? I'm trying to make this participatory. I'm not the only one who can talk. All right. Uh, let's take a, a moment of silence and then we will begin our worship uh, for this uh, 22nd Sunday in Pentecost uh, on page 94 in the front of our red hymnals or our cranberry hymnal with a order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all of our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, 
that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power of the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let's be sure to stand now for our opening song, the gathering song, Baptized and Set Free, in the ELW number 453. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please join together in This is the Feast, found in the front of your hymn book, page 169. the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free. Of God, 
power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, blessing, glory on it. This is the peace of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia. This is the peace of victory for our God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. The victory for our God, Alleluia, Alleluia. This is the peace of victory for our God, Alleluia, Alleluia. Was slain has begun his reign. Victory for our God, Alleluia, Alleluia. This is the peace of victory for our God, Alleluia, Alleluia. Please join with me in the prayer of the day, which is found in your bulletin. O Lord God, tireless guardian of your people, you are always ready to hear our cries. Teach us to rely day and night on your care. Inspire us to seek your enduring justice for all the suffering world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated, and now the choir will sing What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Before the choir begins, I, I said to uh, uh, John Degner at the choir rehearsal, he stole the song I wanted you to sing uh, at this service. Our, when we get to the point of the uh, sermon and the scripture and all that, you'll find out that uh, it's about prayer. It's about persisting in prayer. So I, I am really thankful this is a special arrangement to the choir for, for gracing us with this.
Thank you, choir. That was beautiful. The scripture this morning will be read by Bill Grosskreitz, Jr. Our first lesson this morning is Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 through 31. The introduction, returning to the home he had fled many years before after stealing his brother's birthright and his father's blessing. Jacob wrestles all night long with a divine adversary who ultimately blesses him and changes his name to Israel, a name that means he wrestles with God. The lesson. The same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, limping because of his hip. Here ends the lesson from Genesis. We continue with the psalm which is in your bulletin. I will begin with the light print on the odd numbered verses if you would respond with the even numbered verses. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved, nor will the one who watches over you fall asleep. Behold, the keeper of Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will preserve you from all evil and will keep your life. The Lord will watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. Wow. <laughs> Didn't know I could make a sound like that. We will let's speak the gospel acclamation together in your bulletins. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the word of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 18th chapter. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says, and will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? 
will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. I'd like to invite, if we have any children here, I, we don't have large numbers of children this morning that I see. We might have to take some older children uh, to come up. There we go. Pardon me? You need a microphone. I'll get you one. Lorene, I have to warn you, they make loud sounds sometimes. They really are going to do it. There's a chair over there for you. Woohoo! Look at that. Get out of there. Yeah. There we go. Oh, put this on your belt. Well, what do we got here? Uh, this idea really isn't my own. I was reading uh, Second Corinthians, and it came from the book of Second Corinthians, and it was a letter that Paul was writing to the Corinthians, kind of chewing them out a little bit, right, Pastor? Kind of chewing them out. And what happened was, talked about seeds. So kids, I want you to come up here, one of you kids, and we're going to plant some seeds. Plant some seeds. How would you like to do that? Do you, have any of you planted seeds before? I, I don't know if I can get this open. Jeez. I might have to use my teeth. Oh, yeah, that worked. Yes! <laughs> and they didn't fall out. <laughs> oh, I still can't get Ron. Ron, help me here. He's, who does? Oh, <laughs> she probably does. No, I got it. I got it. I got it. All right, kids. I'm going to give you some seeds. I probably should have my back to the audience here. You're going to get three seeds, okay? One, two, three. You're going to get seven seeds. Put your hand up. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now, I want you to plant your seeds in this dirt. This is not Oreos. This is dirt. Ron and Alan thought it was Oreo crumbs, and they were going to eat it. So put your seeds in there. Let's plant our seeds, kids. Put them in. You put yours in there, okay? And you put yours in there. So one right here. Drop them in there. All right, one, two, one more over there, three. Let's bury them down in there. Yeah. Let's bury them down in there. There we go. You got two seeds going. Let's get some more going. There's four. Keep on going. Five. Six, woohoo, seven, seven, right? One, two, three, four, five. All right, so we better get them covered up, huh? So they can grow. These seeds are going to grow. All right, so now, because we don't have time for the seeds to grow like boom, overnight, we have to kind of do a little magic trick. So I'm gonna have you kids go over there and you're gonna stand that way so you can wait for my magic trick, okay? So now, where's my helper? This is Kelsey, by the way. She's going to be my confirmed next um, Sunday, so let's give her a hand for that. Yeah, she's gonna be confirmed. So don't peek, kids, because this is magic. Don't peek, no peeking. All right. uh -oh. You're peeking. <laughs> All right, Kelsey. Put seven on that one. Got yeah, the adults with her too. 
No, oh, they're being yeah, good speaking. kids over there. Yes. Yes. Kids over there had their backs turned too. They believe in magic. Where's my? No. Nope. All right. Now you can look. Okay, turn around. Wow! What happened? Come over here. Come over here. What happened? How many pumpkins do you have? One, two, three. How many do you have? Seven. Well, how come you got more than he does? How come? Can you tell me? How I must be standing in front of them. Oh, I'm bumping it. How come you got more? Because you planted how many seeds? Seven. And how many do you plant? He's looking for more. <laughs> you planted three. We well, both got nice pumpkins, but she's got more. So her harvest is going to be bigger. So now, here's what I'm getting at. Because you know a lot of the children's sermons pointed towards uh, adults. <laughs> this is a seed we can plant. This is called... This is what they put in the backpack program on Fridays for the kids to take home. So this is a the seed we can plant. And what do we get when we plant good seeds? We get lots of good things, don't we? We get good harvest. So then when we plant the seed of the backpack program, we get kids, we get to harvest kids who are healthier and who get to eat over the weekend. And you'll notice that in your bulletin, it gives you some information on what you can do, how you can plant those seeds. So let's pray, everyone, that, oh, look at that. Oh, such nice kids. They started folding their hands right away. So let's pray. Dear God, let's plant some seeds so kids can be healthy and that they can enjoy their food over the weekend because mom and dad are struggling and need help. So please, God, and we thank you, God, for all the good seeds someone's given us. And we say, amen. Oh, and you know what? I got to give the kids a treat, Pastor, because you started it. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's why these guys came up. <laughs> <laughs> so there we are, kids. Uh, here's a treat for you. And you. Yay. Alan. You've flunked okay. kindergarten quite a few times, haven't you? <laughs> Thank you. That's why you're much bigger than the other kids. <laughs> so this backpack program is a feeding program, isn't Yes, it? it's a feeding program. And what they do, we get... Um, the thing is that we're... Uh, yep, we'll let you go down to mom and dad. He's already trained to open his up. Pastor thinks they should give you a little bit more information. Yes, it's a feeding program for the kids, for the students at school. Those that qualify are kids who get reduced lunches are 51 per, and 51 percent of the kids in uh, Wells USC community surrounding area get reduced meals. This is who the uh, goes to. And they pack it at school. And we want to thank the teachers and the volunteers that really go through a lot of extra time to do this for the kids. I know the teachers got plenty to do, but they've really stepped forward to help out at school and volunteers. They sort of see it firsthand. Yes. Right. They see the hunger and yes. some food insecurity. Yes. So what, what would these good people at Good Shepherd want to do if they want to help with this? What do you need from them? Money. Like how much? <laughs> Four dollars a week is for what a bag costs. Four dollars I could feed one person for a week. What? For a weekend. I can do math. That's if I wanted to do a month. $16. What if it had five? But if it's a year, it's 208 208 okay. And there's a, the address is in the what in if I bulletin. What $208? We'll take anything, Pastor. So any amount will help. Or a volunteer work would work, work volunteer too. Volunteer too. So yeah. 
money, or not only money, but a little bit of time. Yeah, and time is important. How would I, where would I give this money? It's, it's in the bulletin. You give it gets money in, to the bulletin? No. <laughs> <laughs> it gets sent to, uh, it's called United, or it's called Community Spiting Student there's Hunger. A, there's an address there. Yes. I saw that. Yeah. Okay, you put it in an envelope, send it. Is to that, that address. Super. Let's, let's hope that they've read that and we'll do that. Yeah. This is the first time I've been interviewed in front of church, you know. I know. <laughs> Give her a hand. Thank her for doing that. No, I want to thank everybody that's, that's volunteered their help. This is, this is a new seed we are planting in this community. So it has to keep growing. It has to keep going because it's never going to end. People say, well, we'll only have to do it for a year. I'm sorry, you ain't going to have to do it for a year. You're going to have to do it for a long time. End the sermon. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Well, I thought I was doing the sermon. <laughs> Was that there we go uh, today in our gospel lesson Jesus tells us a parable about our need to pray and to not lose heart so I want to begin by asking you a question if I could when is it that you lose heart when do you when is it that you find your heart sinking or your hope fading what is it that takes the winds out of our sails and the bounce out of our step? Well, this has been my experience. Hope leaves me when someone I love leaves me. They don't have to die, but that is probably the hardest of all, to lose somebody to death because I know they'll never be back. But if they move away and they're gone, or worse yet, if we fight, and the relationship breaks and they're, they're rejecting me, I hurt inside. My heart is broken and when I wake up the next day and if nothing has changed, that's when I begin to lose heart. This also happens to me when plans don't work out. When I thought I had everything set to go and I, what was supposed to happen doesn't happen. I'm disappointed, and I can manage this when it happens every once in a while. But after a while, if you go through times when nothing seems to work out, if you're looking for a job and every time you interview, you get rejected, or you're wanting something to happen and every time you try, it fails, that's another time when I begin to lose heart. Now, I, I hope that at my age, I may be better prepared to handle these disappointments than when I was younger. Experience helps us gain a perspective on things, and prayer also helps us to see a bigger picture, to know, if you will, that this too shall pass. And that was part of what is in this parable today. We have reason for hope and confidence when we turn to Jesus in prayer. Jesus teaches us that this precious hope that we can get from prayer only comes when we persist in prayer. That is, we keep on turning to him, praying, <coughs> willing to never give up, willing to open our hearts to Jesus, our friend. I'd like to share a story about persistence. It was about a a uh, young boy by the name of Sparky. Sparky was distinguished. In eighth grade, he failed every subject. Do you have anybody here? No, I won't make you do that. Eighth grade, he failed every subject, and when he got to high school, he managed to distinguish himself even further. He got the worst score in physics that anyone had ever gotten. He got an absolute zero. 
He also managed to flunk Latin, algebra, and English. Not only was he uh, not doing so well in class, he thought he would go out for golf and he got on the golf team and at the most important golf match of the season, he lost. Then there's a consolation match and he lost that too. <clears throat> to make matters even worse, he would be what you might politely call socially awkward. Other students didn't dislike him, they simply ignored him, they couldn't care less about him. And there's no way to tell for sure how he would do at dating because all the way through high school he never once asked a girl out, he was afraid of being turned down. Sparky was a loser. Do you still do this in school sometimes? No, that's old school. Okay, thank you. <laughs> but he was a loser. Maybe they'd put it on Facebook or tweet it. His classmates knew it. He knew it. Everybody knew that Sparky was a loser. So what could he do? He rolled the best he could with it. He made up his mind that if things were meant to work out, they would, and he persisted. And there was one thing that was very important to Sparky. He, is, he, was, he liked to draw, and he loved his artwork. Of course, nobody else liked his artwork or appreciated it. But his senior year, he submits to the annual, to the yearbook, his drawings, his, some cartoons. And the yearbook people turn him down. Wasn't good enough rejected. Well, they, he didn't let them stop that stop him. After graduation, he writes to the Walt Disney Studios and was told, send samples of your work. He drew the proposed cartoons, spent a great deal of time on these and other drawings, submitted them to the Disney Studio, and then waited for their response. And when that letter arrived, Sparky learned that he'd been rejected once more. I can't imagine what it was like for that man, that young man. But I, I can relate to being rejected. My guess is that all of us here in, in, the, in the room have been uh, at some point rejected. We have some experience of being or feeling the loser. Jesus tells us in this parable that the widow has been rejected by the judge. She's been fighting a losing battle for a number of years, or at least for a long time. And well, she may feel like giving up, it's when she doesn't give up, when she keeps going back and back, that she receives justice, even from this scoundrel, this unjust judge, this good-for-nothing judge. And all this, Jesus is saying, has something to do with prayer, and Jesus not wanting us to lose heart. I think this came into focus for me in a new way this, this week when I uh, did a service at Parkview. And I had the residents singing uh, Sweet Hour of Prayer. A few of you know that, that hymn. In the hymn, there's a reference to going to the top of Mount Pisgah. Ever heard of Mount Pisgah? You aren't very good at raising your hands. That, this means if you've heard of Mount Pisgah, raise your hand. No, you haven't. Okay. Uh, I, I remembered staying at the Pisgah Mount, Mount Pisgah Ranch, uh, which was right near Ashland, uh, North Carolina, right, out, right, right outside of Ashland in the, the Smoky Mountains. But that isn't the Mount Pisgah in the Bible. The Mount Pisgah in the Bible was where Moses went after wandering 40 years in the wilderness. Jesus, God had said to him, we're going to lead you to the promised land. Imagine the feeling after 40 years of not getting there. You keep not finding this promised land. But Moses was brought up to Mount, top of Mount Pisgah. They also refer to it as Nebo in the Bible. And that's where, from getting up high enough, he could see across the River Jordan, he could see the promised land. Well, in the sweet hour of prayer song, it's saying that when we pray, it's like going to the top of the mountain. 
And from there, you can see home. From the top of the mountain of prayer, you can see and remember those promises. Friends, when we're down and out, when we're losing hope, we're feeling the loser, we desperately need to know about the promised land. We need to hear that promise again. We need to be reminded that God is with us. We need to be remember that in baptism we're made children of God and that God has promised to always be with us, to never abandon us or leave us alone. And it's when we pray, when we go to him in prayer, that we receive the assurance that we need to keep going. This is where we catch a glimpse of home. After his uh, rejection from Disney, Sparky decided to take matters into his own hand and he was going to write his own autobiography and cartoons. He was gonna describe his childhood itself, this little boy loser, this chronic underachiever, using a cartoon. And this cartoon character would become famous worldwide. For Sparky, the boy who failed every subject in eighth grade, whose work was rejected over and over again, was Charles Schultz. I see some recognition in your, some of your eyes. Charles Schultz was the creator of the Peanuts comic strip. And the little boy whose kite would never fly who never succeeded in kicking that football was Charlie Brown. Let us pray. Oh God, give us the strength and the courage we need to persist in prayer. And when we pray, lift us to a high place where we can see all that you have planned for us, plans that reflect your gracious mercy and love. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand for the song of the day, Morning Cry, in the ELW number 732.
Congregation, you may be seated, and I invite you to uh, turn to page 227 in the front of your Cranberry Hymnal uh, for the Holy Baptism service. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of Holy Baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death, raises us to new life in Jesus Christ, we are united with all the baptized in one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. And I ask you to present. Would that be and you would present, uh, you would say Jackson's full name. Jackson Lewis for baptism. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace of God and the love of God, do you desire to have your child baptized into Christ? If so, answer, I do. As you bring Jackson Lewis to receive the gift of baptism, you're entrusted with responsibilities. That is to live with him uh, among God's faithful people, to bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in his hands the Holy Scripture, nurture him in faith and in prayer, so that he may learn to trust God and proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and to work for justice and peace. I ask you now, do you promise to help Jackson grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, please answer, I do. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Jackson in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit to help him live in the covenant of baptism and communion with the church? If so, answer, I do. Congregation, people of God, do you support, promise to support Jackson Lewis and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If so, answer, we do. I ask you now to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, please say, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, please respond, I renounce them. Congregation, I invite you to stand and participate in the, the creed at this point. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? in God, the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, holy God. You are the creator of the waters of the earth. You are the fire of rebirth. You poured out your spirit on your people Israel. You breathed life into our dry bones. Your son Jesus promised to send the spirit to us so that the world may know your peace and truth. Pour out your Holy Spirit and breathe new life into those who are here baptized. By your spirit, adopt us all as your children through our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And if you would bring Jackson Lewis to the font, and congregation, you may be seated. And if there are some small children that would like to come up so they can get a better look at what's going on,
Al, stay in your seat, wherever you are. No, uh, children want to come come up and see. You can come up because this is sort of a special time. This is where Jackson becomes a, officially a child of God, and he's smiling about it. Oh, you're so happy. Yeah, you ready to have a wet head? <laughs> you need to come right up here so you can see better. Watch out for that big candle. That's our Christ candle, and we always light that at the time of a baptism. So. Okay, you can get him down here. Jackson Lewis, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You keep him here. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through the water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and your sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain, sustain Jackson Lewis with the gift of the Holy Spirit, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, a spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. And I will anoint him. Jackson Lewis, child of God, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. And we have something for you all. Said. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. And let us together welcome this newly, newest member of our congregation of the Christian faith, uh, Lewis Jackson and his family. We'll speak the words together found in, the, in your book. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share joining us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. And this is a, appropriate to give just a little bit of a round of applause. Yeah. Yeah, we asked mom and dad if they would walk it up and down the aisle as we sing uh, the first and the fourth verse of Born, Morning Cry again. We're going to go on display. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, for those in need, and all of God's creation. Gracious God, we give thanks that you have entrusted us with your mission. 
Help us all to witness to your power and grace in the world. Keep us steadfast and hopeful in prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We are thankful that you have led us to the ministry in Chile of Karen Anderson and others. Bless our partnership with hers so that many will benefit from this ministry. We give thanks for the Southeastern Minnesota Synod and Bishop Steve. Bless him and all who reach out in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Care for all throughout the land who share Christ's love including Trinity Lutheran in Spring Grove, Root Prairie Lutheran in Fountain, and all in our local communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With your almighty power, shape mountains, carve rivers and streams, and enrich fields to yield abundant harvests. Help us see your good works throughout creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be present with those who visit the homebound and those living away from home. Surround them with love and assurance of your presence in the bread and wine. Provide relief to those who ache from living alone or away from family and friends. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We thank you for the gift of family and new life. We lift our voices in thanksgiving for Cain Michael Whelan and Jackson Lewis Florin. Help us as we strive to nurture and encourage faith in these children. Walk with and guide their parents, Kyle, Whitney, Gregory, and Chelsea, their families and sponsors in following your word and way. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Reveal yourself to those who face serious illness, especially Shannon Rice, Bill Niebuhr, James Wilner, Jan Helfritz, Caroline Tachi, and those we name silently in our hearts. Encourage those who have lost trust or wrestle with faith. Help us all to persist in prayer and receive your comfort and healing. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> Living God, Remembering with gladness the saints who put their trust in you, we pray you increase our faith to live according to your ways for the sake of your people. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Holy One, we entrust all for whom we pray, confident in your abundant and abiding mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Congregation, I'm going to ask you to stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us exchange God's peace. Continue our worship as we receive our tithes.
offertory per prayer, please join with me. God of all creation, all you all have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see, now that, that the Lord is good, and all is ready. I invite you to come down in two lines and uh, receive a cup and then come to me and I'll go from one side to the other giving you the bread and then off to the side where your cup will be filled and then there's a spot for your cup uh, afterwards. Come to the table.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us in this gift in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may have noticed up here on the table some unusual looking uh, 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 items. These are the bags that our home communion uh, servers use. Uh, the elements are blessed during the service. I want you to think we were serving at least 31 people on a, a regular basis, communion, people who are unable to come into the building, we take the communion to them. And I'm very thankful for the, the, uh, the, the communion servers that are doing that and we'll be regularly uh, seeing the elements coming up here and being blessed as part of our, our service. And we extend that service in, into, the, into the congregation. Receive a blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Remember that everyone is, is invited downstairs for coffee and treats following the service. And now our ascending song is in the blue with one voice. Seek ye first, number 783. Serve the Lord.